Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the History Made Awesome podcast. This is episode uh, number six. Uh, we are recording on a Wednesday again. I think this is something that will be a regular occurrence uh, due to our school schedules. And they'll come out on Friday, hopefully in the mornings. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, they'll, they'll come out when they come out, depending on how fast my internet want, wants to work that day. Um, so we're back with Ben. Say hi to everybody, Ben. Hello. Uh, we are... Hi, everybody. Yes. So um, I guess we can start out this simply. Ben, how is your <laughs> how's your day been so far? How's your week been so far? Uh, yeah, they've been good. Um, just, you know, pretty routine stuff. Oh, well, kind of. I actually kind of got, I got into a, that class I told you before that I didn't get into. Yeah. Um, I don't think that was on the podcast, but um, there's a class that I tried to get into and didn't get into. Mm-hmm. And I looked it up and there was another time. So I went to that time and I didn't get into it. Oh, um, okay. But the professor liked me and said, hey, how about we set up a meeting so that we can um, discuss getting you into like actual like full research instead of the class research. Um, And when I set up the meeting with the professor, um, you know, they're going over a bunch of stuff. They're like, oh, and actually there's a, another section of that class. Someone just dropped out of it. Do you want that spot? Uh But sure. (laughs) So now I'm in the research class and I'm on like the steps to getting into actual full research. Sweet. That's exciting. (laughs) Persistence pays off. I take it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, no, persistence is like the name of the game when it comes to anything. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> kind of. Exactly. Um, uh, so, so you actually, you you kind of start your Wednesdays late. So what what you got going on at like around like eight ish or nine ish? Do you have a class or something or a club? Oh yeah, I have a physics class that goes late. Um, mm. and then yeah, and then today was um after the physics class, I had a a club meeting. It's uh you're doing fencing, right? Is that true? And yeah, that's why I'm so late. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, that's that's the one. Mm, have you guys started like Yeah, I'm used each to other? doing uh <laughs> kind of um I'm used to doing uh rapier fencing. It's like a really long, skinny poke people with it. Yeah. And now the club mainly does uh long sword, which is you hold it with two hands and you have to swing it at people. Oh, snap. Um it's 100% different and it's really weird. Mm. Um, but there's this guy that's there who's really good. Mm-hmm. He, he's not part of the school. He's like a, like an he's, he's technically yeah. a master actually. They, they, oh. they, they still give out that rank. Oh wow. Uh, he's been doing it for like 30 years. Damn. Um, now that I think about it, he doesn't even look that old. Mm. Yeah. Right now my brother, he's he looks doing, like yeah. early 30. Anyway. Yeah. Right now my brother, he's at, uh, he's currently doing Brazilian Jiu Jitsu at USC right now. And, uh, they have uh-huh. a... So yeah. the black belt being the highest belt for any for any martial arts, they have a brown belt. When which is like in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, it's like it's really hard to get belts. It's like you have you have to spend like maybe three to four years trying to move up a belt, maybe like two or three years, like doing it consistently to get to get to the next rank. <laughs> and uh, so they have a brown belt, which is a really high rank, of course, not as big as a black 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 belt. But the thing about him is that uh, the instructor they have at that that club. He trains at a very very well known uh, uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu gym. Um, the guy who owns it is really well known in the community for that, and so he's he actually started uh, doing tournaments. Uh, I think last week mm. before that. So yeah, I could definitely see. Okay. I don't I, I don't know how you can use fencing in some sort of uh, self defense, uh, but that'd be really interesting to see how 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 that would happen. Uh, um, the main answer is you don't. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. The answer. Exactly. Awesome. But yeah, uh, my yeah, week. Yeah. Go. I've, I've noticed a. Yeah, go ahead. I, was, oh. I noticed a pattern among people who are they're like, yeah, I want to like actually have to fight someone someday, like with. And I will be able to do that just to see if I can actually. Oh yeah, I've noticed the really good fencing fighters um mm. like the really good ones ones who've been doing it for decades all seem to have this like sort of fantasy where they're like yeah i, w- I want to like actually have to fight someone someday using <laughs> swords the hell just to see if i can survive <laughs> i think a knife will just do well it's, enough though to be fair <laughs> uh yeah i mean if if i had to choose like if there were two weapons and sword, i would definitely pick the sword Mm-hmm. Um, unless that person like is really fast mm-hmm. and they can get into the range of your sword, mm-hmm. it, yeah. If 
then you're screwed. But if they can't, then you're gonna win. <laughs> Just yeah. hands down. Yeah. Um, it's actually kind of funny. I, I've actually knife with masters before, and mm. I mean, like a street knife. Mm. It seems kind of random about who will. Like, it's it's way more even <laughs> yeah despite them having years and years of training <laughs> yeah weird. yeah carbo is also should be a good one too for self-defense especially if you want to use like weapons or whatever or to like take weapons away from people mm-hmm. yeah i don't know yeah i think you just said if you want to be really proficient in those types of arch you have to really do it like over and over again um i don't really have yeah. the time or the patience right now to do it more more like the time <laughs> um but yeah i think yeah. that's something i really want to do especially when i take my gap year I like to get more into martial arts and do that type of stuff, which would be awesome. Um, another reason why mm. I'm kind of not really getting into martial arts right now because I'm more focused on soccer. And uh, speaking of soccer, and we're going to transfer over to the news right now, uh, this kind of br- broke my heart, but was I surprised? Not really. Um, the U.S. national team fails to qualify for the 2018 World Cup. Um, so the scenario that the U.S. had to do was they had to go to Trinidad and Tobago, which is, to kind of give you a, like a size or, a, you know, a t- context in, in a sense, uh, Trinidad and Tobago is a very small mm-hmm. island. It only has 1.1 million people, which is like this population of Maine. And of course, the U.S. is like, I think, 300 million or 200 million. It has a lot of people. Um, and so mm-hmm. for the U.S. to go through, they had to either win or they draw, and they hope that uh, Panama and Costa Rica, uh, not Costa Rica, Panama and Honduras have poor go- um, goal differentials. Basically, like uh, basically the differential between your goal. If you have a higher goal differential and you're all equal on points, the better the goal differential. The you basically the the winner, or whatever you know. What I'm saying, um, and if they would lose, which they did, both those teams would have had to. Uh, Actually, one of those teams would have had to lose, or both of them had to lose. I forget which. And so the U.S. had to go to this Trinidad and Tobago and play them and beat them. And, of course, Trinidad and Tobago, they were last place. I don't think they had won a game, like, in a year or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and, of course, I'm like, everyone's like, okay, all they have to do is go there. It's going to be an easy win. I'm like, okay, that's already off to a bad start. And plus, the U.S. national team had not been playing very well at all. <laughs> This entire this entire year, and um, I didn't watch the game, but I was like, um, I was like working out or something like that, and then I'm like, let me just check Twitter, see what's going on. At halftime, Trinidad was up 2-0. I just like like palmed in my head, just like, oh, you gotta be kidding me. And then I was like, yeah, we can still make it, we can still make it, and uh, ended up ending 2-1. And nope, we are not going to the 2018 World Cup, the first time I think since like 1984. Which is ridiculous. I think it was 19... <laughs> was it? Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. Uh, 1986. Oh, 1986. Crazy. Yeah, so it was close. Um, it's... <laughs> okay, we're going we're gonna to get into a little bit more. Because um, for myself, I'm very much into soccer. I'm very much into like youth sports as well as a, as a soccer coach. And I've kind of been through mm-hmm. like the like the education system for coaches in the U.S., and kind of like the way they do things, so I kind of have a decent idea on that. On that, um, a couple of things on that note. The reason why, one of the reasons why the U.S. national team doesn't have good players, like if you look at Argentina or if you look at like Mexico or whatever, or any of those other places, um, mm-hmm. a lot of times it's based on like uh, if you look at basketball, right? How many kids in the inner cities or all those other types of places are playing basketball by themselves, right? You know, just doing pickup games mm-hmm. and just playing in the street. That's nothing like the U.S., where it's just like it's all pretty much people with lots of money, because you need, because if you want to get a good coach, you have to pay the money for it. And let me tell you, those fees are extremely yeah. expensive, and it's very hard for someone in the inner cities or someone who would very much, you know, I'm not saying inner cities, but I'm just saying like a lot of people are going to be having trouble paying for that, and even like people that I know have trouble paying for that. It's very expensive. And I don't know if this mm-hmm. is a part of it, but I think that the amount of money you can make in soccer in the U.S. is – I don't know if it's like – what's it called? If you have a choice between playing basketball and making lots of money or playing soccer and making, you know, and doing that, I think a lot more people would choose basketball 
because not you know you, you know there's a chance for you to make lots of money you know there's a system that can support you like high school you know pretty much a lot of those kids go to high school and i know some of these kids do travel teams but high school is where you can pretty much make it i would think and you know what i'm saying there's just a lot more like you know, if you had to choose, you would, a lot of people would choose like football or basketball or any of those types of sports where you know you can make it big. Well, in soccer, you kind of have to like scrap, and you're not really making the big bucks. Um, but I mean, that's just that's just my opinion. A lot of people are saying that you should probably restructure the entire thing, um, probably fire the head of the U.S. soccer president. Um, to be fair, no one really knows what to do. The only good side on this is that this isn't the first time a, a big team like us has failed to reach the World Cup. Um, I know England failed to reach it in 1995. Um, it's funny enough that that's another story, but you know they're the ones who pretty much created soccer, but they only have one one World Cup, which is interesting. Hmm. And I think Germany did very poorly. Yeah, that happened to them with multiple sports. <laughs> yeah, yeah, cricket and all these other sports. I like to see the history on that. That'd be kind of interesting yeah. how like how they're the sports and how they kind of spread throughout the entire world. Um, and I think Germany also screwed yeah. up screwed up as well in the 2000 euros um so the good thing is is that these types of uh things have happened uh but these teams will hopefully have come out good i think the best example is germany you know they pretty much screwed up in the 2001 euros end up winning the world cup in 2012 uh, yeah it's four years mm-hmm. yeah it's four tw- yeah four or five six seven eight. yeah um but then again they're germany and it's not, and people like to say, well, it's because like, you know, the reason why Brazil and Argentina are all so good teams is because they're poor countries, and the only way for those kids to make out of those countries is because of soccer or, the, or athletics, which I think is partly true. Mm-hmm. I mean, Brazil's won five World Cups, um, but then again, Germany is one of the most industrialized, most like, you know, pretty much economically powerful country in the world, especially in Europe, and they've won four World Cups. But I don't think that's like indication of like what makes your team a good soccer team i think it helps a lot though i think you create a lot more you know a lot more good talent because the only way for those kids to make it out of the the barrio is through soccer or athletics but i don't think it's the only quantifier and i think a part of it is also because coaching is way was way too expensive and i know the coaches that are out there and let me tell you i don't think a lot of them are worth the money that they're getting paid but then again they can force people to pay those prices (laughs) Um, but yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> I, for me, I was not surprised. I'm like, the U.S. are going to screw up somehow and they end up doing, um, so what's your, what's your take on that? If you have any takes on that? Uh, yeah, I'm, saying, I'm not quite as invested into any sport really, but yeah, not really that invested into, into well, I don't know. I'm not, I don't really watch sports very much. I like to play most sports. For me, um, I'll go to a live game. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but um i don't know watching them on tv and stuff i've never really been interested in mm-hmm. um as far as the, the way sports are set up in america and yeah, i could kind of agree that people will try to go for different sports because it has better money in it mm-hmm. but at the same time i don't think it's very easy i don't think anyone's born and they're just like okay like this person's a superstar athlete mm-hmm. now which sport do you it's like people are kind of a certain you know someone who's going to be amazing at soccer probably isn't also going to be amazing at football <laughs> mm-hmm. in general mm-hmm. you get to the high like the the prof- especially like soccer versus basketball mm-hmm. crossover almost at all you don't think the crossover at all um but yeah uh i said almost at all uh, okay. I, I could see like a little bit but i mean um, I mean, I guess a good example of that is my uncle is six foot two, mm-hmm. and my dad is five foot nine. My uncle is really great at basketball, and he was really into it for most of his life. Mm-hmm. My dad was really What? What did you um, say? I don't think they would have. Oh. Uh, my dad was really great at soccer. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I think people are built a certain way. I don't think it's that choose which sport you want to. Mm-hmm do <laughs> yeah i don't yeah. know yeah I, it's just like i don't know it's one that's funny enough that like uh like the <laughs> you know it, i don't know it's, it's just so weird 
I think there's a lot of changes that can be made, and hopefully they can make them. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's kind of been on the cards for like a long time, even though the U.S. has like made the last two World Cups. Um, it'll be interesting to watch a World Cup without the U.S. And I, I think they, if they would have probably made the World Cup, I think they would have probably went out in the first in the group stages, um, because if, frankly, the team doesn't, the team does not really like strike fear in anybody. It's like, oh my God, like we have this guy or this guy. It's like, okay, we have this guy. He's really good. This guy, he's okay. This guy is okay, and this other guy is well. That's the best we got. <laughs> 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 and, <laughs> yeah, that sounds right. And uh, so, I mean, but yeah, so that was kind of that was kind of like okay, that happened. Um, let's see, what's other, what else has happened in the world? Um, I guess since we're kind of in Europe, I guess we'll get to U.S. news in a little bit. I've been following a lot of uh, Catalonia right now. Uh, main reason for myself is because I'm doing research in Spain, and like we were talking before, like Spain, of course, is not a very you know, very unified culturally. Of course, there's many different cultures within Spain, Catalonia being one of them. One of them. And on Tuesday, I believe, they were going to declare independence or not declare independence. And basically what they decided to do was basically put the declaration on hold and kind of talk to Madrid pretty much. Hmm. But then uh, Madrid basically said, like, uh, you guys have three days to either say you guys are going to vote for independence or not vote for independence. Really doesn't really matter what you guys do because we're gonna take. If you guys say you're not gonna vote for independence, you guys continue your like your, because you're pretty much been like an, like some sort of autonomy. They can kind of do a lot of things down themselves. But if they actually don't, mm-hmm. uh, if they actually don't withdraw the declaration, and then within three days they'll actually take direct rule of Catalonia again. So it's it's getting pretty intense i'd say um and it's funny enough when it comes to catalonia as well uh they appeal to the eu which is in france or i think france well france is like the major player in european politics at right now and france is and the eu have basically said well nope that's a that's internal spanish matter <laughs> so right now catalonia is pretty screwed um i don't really see anything going on helping them out right now What's your take on that? Um, I don't know. I, I I've been trying to follow all of the stuff that's going on there. I haven't really been able to that much. <laughs> um, that's when you're talking. I was a little bit like, oh, that's I didn't hear about that. That's interesting. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, I don't know. I I'm I don't know. I'm still just curious to kind of to see what happens. It's like I don't really know enough about Spain culturally. Mm-hmm. Yeah. To be able to be like have any kind of guess at all about how who's going to react. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I mean, they do too well in the beginning. Yeah. Um, that's why the vote ended up being so hard. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I think if they had just let it go forward in the first place, it probably would have ended up being a really close no. Yeah. Just bare like barely scraped by as a no. Yeah. And then they worry about it at all now. <laughs> yeah. Um. It's an intense initial reaction that they kind of screwed themselves over. Yeah. So I don't know. It'd be interesting. It's what like, happened. I don't really yeah. know about the. Go. What'd you say? Well, so how do you think the other countries would react? Um, do you, if if a civil war, are they all just going on the same side? Um. And you know. <laughs> I think there's Are they enough, stay out of it? I think there's enough people in Catalonia to basically say, well, we don't we really want to go through with this, so we really want to go through the problems um of going through that way. I don't think there would be a civil war because it's a pretty I'm not saying it's a small, it's a pretty it's a pretty decent sized uh, area in northern Spain. Um but I think that would mm-hmm. pretty much end very quickly. I think there'd be a lot of riots probably maybe. Um mm. but I don't think I don't think it'll go to that that degree, but if it was, it'd be very interesting to see what the European nations would do. They've already kind of said, well, this is an internal Spanish matter. Um, I don't think they'll kind of get in anymore. Mm. Uh, that's the thing. They like, oh, we will we will touch. It's funny, like a lot of these countries, are like, well, if it's in a European country, we we won't touch it. But if it's like another 
part of the world. Yeah, we'll definitely touch that crap. <laughs> yeah. Which is funny. Um, so that's one of the news is I was yeah, well, I think yeah, it's, go. you know, just the way the EU is. Yeah, the EU's. EU I was saying, I think it's just sort of the way that the EU is built. It's like, like you don't really want to upset that balance that kind of exists there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so um, we're kind of well. I guess we'll transition over to U.S. news. I guess one of the first things that kind of stuck out. This was uh, happened two days ago. Um, but we can kind of see things unraveling in the Republican Party. Was it, I believe, two hmm. days ago, one of the heads, Bob Corker, which was the head of what's committee? I will look it up right now. I think it was the Armed Forces Committee or Foreign Relations Committee. Okay. Yeah, he was the chairman for the uh, Senate Foreign Relations Committee. And basically, his name was Bob Corker. Um, they've been pretty much going back and forth, right? Between himself and Donald Trump, they were not really happy with each other. And he decided to not go up for a real election next year, correct? Or did he step down? I believe he stepped down, right? No, no, I think he's just not going to go for re-election. Okay. So basically, and so basically the, <laughs> he made some extremely interesting points here. I just want to read them out. Um... And this is, he talked a lot about things that you were talking about, Ben, how his team doesn't know what they're doing with Trump, that they're letting him go too far awry. Um, I'm trying to see what, I'm trying to look for specific. Um, he says, I don't know why the president tweets out things that aren't true. You know he does. Everyone knows he does it. He also says, I know for a fact mm-hmm. that every single day at the White House is a situation for trying to contain. It's a situa- situation of trying to contain him. Um, yeah, so pretty much a lot of things that you said. And it's funny, I like this one. It said, uh, it's a shame the White House has become an adult <clears throat> care center. Someone obviously missed their shift this morning. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> God damn. Yeah, I there was one article that I liked because um, it it used it so nonchalantly. There's an article that said um, like that uh, Donald Trump's handlers um, are having difficulty um, at night and on weekends because they can't control him as much. And it just it was just like yeah, his handlers. You know, I mean, it, was, it wasn't even like trying to like take a jab at him or anything. It was just like you know his handlers. Like that's just that's just what they are. <laughs> It was. I oh hope I, I hope they get great. paid lots of money for what they do, cause I that seems like an impossible job to be fair. Uh, then, no, they I get paid so. okay. It depends on which position. <laughs> true. 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 But yeah, you can kind of see things. I don't, and also, they also have a new. Uh, they're gonna try to vote for a new tax. Um. Not I'm saying a tax law, but basically like new tax reforms. Um, and, they, and again, they're going for like a top down, yeah. uh, like a, what's it called? I forget what the official term is like, uh, Reaganomic kind of thing going trickle on. Down. Trickle down. There we go. Trickle uh, down. Yeah. And pretty much it's the same idea where it's like, yeah, we're going to cut taxes for the rich and it's going to go down to the built model and everyone else is going to be happy. But then they found that pretty much that doesn't happen. Yeah. We already know it doesn't work at all, but yeah, you know. but we're going to keep doing it because it's the most Republican thing you can do. Yeah, it's it's funny enough. Like it, I was I was watching a um, I believe I was watching a was it CNN documentary. You know how they do documentaries like on the like decades or whatever. And this one was about Reagan and yeah. um, basically like how it beginning of his like presidency. And so I was kind of looking at to see what the reason for why it didn't work. And I know mm-hmm. that in the beginning of his term he uh. He pretty much like it was pretty shitty, like people were out of work and things weren't going well. And what they, I believe they were trying to mm-hmm. do was basically uh, cut back um, the deficit, and and I think they were trying to control uh, what's it called inflation. But the only problem with that is that people started mm-hmm. to lose their jobs even more or whatever. And it's funny because they didn't really explain it very well. If they did, I think things just kind of went better. And if my mind serves it correctly, I think it was not because of Reaganomics. I think it was because of people just started buy, using credit, like, a lot with credit cards and things of that nature. Mm. Okay. Um, but I'll have to look more deeply into that because that seems kind of interesting. Um, but then again, this is 
this is the third thing that uh, the Republicans are going to try to pass in both the House and Senate. Um, they failed twice on trying to repeal and replace uh, the Affordable Care Act. Um, again, stopped by two like a couple of Republicans who didn't like the fact that it wasn't going through like a what's it called like a process. It would be trying. It was trying to be done like overnight. Well, let's see. There. Yeah. Yeah, it was. There's one person who's like, no, it's not extreme enough. We need to make it worse. Mm-hmm. Um, and kept voting no for that reason. Um, there's a couple people who. Yeah, I think there was one person, or maybe yeah, to go through the committee. That way, things can be negotiated and blah blah blah. There were one or two people who, um, were just like, no, it's too bad. It's it, you're doing terrible things. Mm-hmm. Um, and I I remember like because I remember the um the Alaskan person was voting against it. I think Medi- oh, Medicare or Medicaid. Um, substantially, and her state relies a lot on it. So mm-hmm. she was like, nope, can't do it. Everyone will vote me out. <laughs> mm-hmm. And so now this is the third thing they're going to try to pass. Um, I don't know. It's it's not as divisive as the other two ones. So it might go through, actually. Um, but then again, like, if... if <laughs> yeah. If, uh, what's it called? If, if uh, the Trump is pissing off every single Republican that he can... Um, especially like someone like mm-hmm. the like Bob Cork, who's actually sitting on a very, very privileged committee. Um, it should be interesting. It, it I will not be surprised if it fails, um, but it's there's a good chance it could go through because it's not such a divisive issue and like not everybody in the world is glued to their TVs about this or whatever. So I think it yeah, could and the Republicans have set it up so that, that they, they can, can negotiate, negotiate, with negotiate with the Democrats, where it's like, like okay, okay, you know, all those, those things, things that, that we said. said were going if you let us slash the other thing instead mm-hmm. and they're going to do a lot of that stuff i think so it they'll they'll definitely pass some things i think mm-hmm. um have to see how terrible they try to you know how how badly they try to just <laughs> mm-hmm. so yeah and then also on the uh, note i'm trying to look for an article uh but it was about a couple of days ago trump tweeted out something or he, they put out new uh, laws for requiring the Dreamers. I'm trying to see if I can find information on that. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see right now. Da, da, da. Uh, I can't find it. Uh, try, oh, here we go. I found it. Um, so the then this new it's kind of like a, like a memo kind of, um, but basically mm-hmm. this new thing is uh, it ties the Dreamer plan to border to the border clampdown. Says the White House tied any new deal on young undocumented immigrants to clamp down on illegal immigration, including the border wall of Mexico. It says U.S. President Donald Trump is asking for funding for the wall. Da da da. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, okay, what are Trump demands? Okay, constructing the border wall with Mexico, employing 10,000 additional immigrant uh Immigration, eight customs enforcement officers, 1,000 lawyers for the agency, hiring an extra 370 immigration judges and 300 federal prosecutors, banning immigrants from bringing their extended families to the U.S., penalizing sanctuary cities that have resisted Trump's, uh, the Trump administration's efforts to crack down illegal immigration, and having companies use e-verify programming to keep illegal immigrants from getting jobs. That seems like a very hmm. big step back from what he was saying before, how... He was actually going to work with uh, the Democrats uh, to actually get these guys or get the Dreamers um, chances and opportunities in the U.S. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's um, Jesus Christ, man. He's all he's always all over the place. I mean, it's it's kind of it's literally impossible to predict him <laughs> yeah. to the point where people keep thinking they can almost predict him. And then he does something fucking stupid. Exactly. Oh my gosh. Um, it's it's hard to say. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, the, the fucking wall's not gonna be built. That's silly. That's not gonna happen. Yeah, um, um, the other things could possibly happen because you can just let the because uh, the um, 2012 uh, what's his name the uh, Do- not DACA right DACA yeah um, is gonna is gonna go mm-hmm. and uh, it's gonna stop in March. 
Um, so he's definitely gonna wait for that to go, to go away. Um, he can pretty much do whatever he kind of wants. But when it comes to federal spending, it's gonna be very hard for those things to happen, especially the wall. I believe they were testing a couple of walls or different types of walls or whatever um, of how to do it, but it looked more like a fence than anything else, not like a big giant wall or whatever. Yeah, they, they were. They started to like <laughs> spruce up some of the fences that are already there. Yeah. Um, and I think that's what, that's like all they've really done so far. Mm-hmm. Um. <laughs> And then, yeah, they have a bunch of, like, design possibilities. Like, you know, people submit designs, then they might get picked. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, I don't... It's going to keep going back and forth until we see actually what happens. Um, I don't know. It's I don't know, man. We've, we've talked about this issue before. Um, it sucks for the people who have to go through that. Um, and the funny and the thing about that is that like a lot of people were like we talked about this before, but like a lot of people like don't have connections to the U- to Mexico or like the place they came from because a lot of them probably came here when they were very young, and they were mm-hmm. pretty much grew up as U.S. citizens. So it's kind of more fucked up than anything else. Sorry, excuse my language, but basically, yeah, it's it's really messed up. Um, mm-hmm. So it's hopefully hopefully a situation. I mean, hopefully a what's it called a. An answer, a very good answer for this, this for the situation ends up coming or from this, and uh, hopefully the people don't have to, you know, go through those terrible times because they're already kind of going through, you know, hard times because they have to deal with that type of status, and, and now the, those things we put more on mm-hmm. notice that these things, if those types of things go through, um, but yeah, it's just like, ugh. especially when I know people who've gone through that, it's just like, ah, oh, Jesus. But, um, yeah, and then uh, on that note as well, uh, at the same time right now, uh, Justin Trudeau, who's the current prime minister of Canada, is currently meeting with Trump. And one of the biggest things they're talking about is NAFTA, which is the North, uh, North, fuck, what is it? what's the acronym called? North, that's North, North Atlantic. North American. There we go, North American. Something Trade, trade Association. <laughs> yeah, NAFTA. Agreement, yeah, agreement. North American Free, free trade, trade, trade Agreement. There okay. we go. Um, so basically that treaty allows, it pretty much allows for more like trade to go through. So it lowers tariffs between countries, um, and basically allows like for trade to go through. So like Mexico is able look, so there's a couple things, uh, surprisingly enough, actually both, all of our economies have pretty much gone up, um, from this treaty because it allows for more trade and more things to go through. Um, Mexico has, uh, benefited a lot from allowing more factories and more, um, like agricultural businesses to be grown in Mexico and then be sold over into the U S for a lot mm-hmm. lower prices. And of course us Americans buy them, which basically means that money's flowing through and, you know, goods are flowing to us. We can buy them at a cheaper price and then we can then, uh, they, they of course get the money from the selling of things. Canada is also, I think they've seen a 5% growth in their economy as well. Um, but what Trump wants to do is wants to um, pretty much limit NAFTA because he feels that even though that it makes our prices a lot cheaper, um, it takes away from more domestic jobs like factories and and especially. Um, so he really wants to. It's funny because he was on the campaign trail and he was pretty much saying that he wanted to uh, abandon it completely. But he's kind of like softened his tone to more like he called quote unquote modernizing it. Um, so it should be interesting mm-hmm. what happens from that. Um, I definitely like my prices cheap. Um, and then when it comes, <laughs> and then when it comes to the people who are going to lose their jobs mm-hmm. or factory jobs, uh, probably diversify mm-hmm. diversify your job skills instead of um, knowing how to push a, a lever over and over again. Um, pretty much, that's what well, factories. Our economy right now has more open jobs than it has. Um, I think by number more than ever, but by like some kind of percentage, it has more open jobs than since 2001 Mm -hmm. was something I was reading earlier today. So if you can't find a job, then maybe you just need to move to a different market. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Like, I don't know. I think people, obviously they always blame things. They need to blame it on someone else. It's not their fault, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. Jumping out of NAFTA, according to all the economists, is a terrible idea. Mm-hmm. renegotiating it in any way is likely a terrible idea. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, that's kind of Trump in a nutshell. So, um, I think there were some things... to say. I think there were some things that they were talking about that it could be fixed. 
Um, but yeah, definitely. And plus, they've also said like in terms of taking more jobs away, I think probably like China's had more of a. <laughs> I think China's done more to that than anything else, um, because of the amount the amount mm-hmm. of things that's produced over there. Uh, but yeah, I think that if you definitely can get yeah. that that percentage, and we can put that in the uh, video description or in the descriptions, we can definitely uh, that will definitely give you a lot better sense of what's going on there. Uh, I'm trying to see if I can find anything for NAFTA. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of the there are some things that can't be changed, but I can't seem to find it. If I find it, I'll definitely put it out in the uh, in the description. Um, but mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, let's see. Anything else in terms of political news? I don't think so. Um, uh, trying to think right now. Yeah. Uh, I, not, not anything, anything that can't really be summed, summed up with Trump, Trump is being, being stupid, stupid again. again. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, there's, there's a thing, a thing with, with NBC where, where he's, he's like, like, I'm going, going to, to destroy, destroy the First Amendment <laughs> and, and get rid of this news. Easy. Yeah, and funny enough, uh, like... Oh, there's the yeah. thing with the Boy Scouts. That's kind of fun. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> actually, yeah, you had actually told this story to me, so if you, I, I just read it, but if you can kind of explain everybody what's going on with that one. If you... If you oh, I should just... I just find it entertaining. The Boy Scouts have decided, um, like, uh, their whole, like, I don't know what it's called, their committee or the people at the head um, voted unanimously to allow girls into the Boy Scouts, like, certain sections of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and about it and said that the Boy Scouts are because they're running out of money. Oh, <laughs> and um, yeah, the Girl Scouts said I think if, I think they're like um, I can't remember how they phrased it, but it was something like why do, uh, you should uh, it was like we strongly recommend that instead of targeting um, girls, you should instead um, try to target the ninety percent of boys, the Boy Scouts yet. Oh, oh, because they're uh, wait. You said the ninety like percent, the ninety percent of the population who aren't in the Boy Scouts. <laughs> it just sounded. Really hard dig where it's like, yeah, the majority of people aren't even in, like in organization. Why don't you try to work on that first <laughs> before expanding? Um, was it? All, wouldn't they say that the girls, the Girl Scout themselves, weren't they also like, um, they were down, they were kind of like losing members, right? They were not gaining as many members as they used to. Both of them, both of them have lost um, hundreds of thousands of members in the past few years. Wow. Damn. So that's yeah. the only way for them to actually recruit some type of like population in their in their organizations is to do that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Basically, I mean that's kind of what it seems like. Seems like the boys. That, I mean that's what it seems like they're trying to do. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I was kind of thinking it might be cool if like the two organizations teamed up instead. Yeah. Um, maybe they could get more done instead of becoming competing forces. I don't know why. I just find that so hilarious where they're just like. I don't know. See, the idea of the Boy Scouts and the Girl Scouts fighting is just like really silly to me. And the funny thing is, like, the Boy Scouts are actually doing something that's very progressive. I think. I mean, in a larger sense, like they're bringing in girls into an organization of made of might, boys. I think it's trying to be guys. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's trying to be under the guise of being progressive, but realistically, I mean. Like, there's already the Girl Scouts. Um, yeah. That's why I said if if they really wanted to be, like, more progressive, it'd be like, hey, let's team up, and then the organizations can work together. And, you know, and the boys can help you guys sell the cookies, and the girls can become an Eagle Scout, because those are the only two things that they really have against each other. Yeah. Um, That Eagle Scout is, like, coveted, and then the Girl Scout cookies are way better than the Boy Scouts <laughs> like, popcorn or whatever they sell. I wonder why. Um... I wonder why. Because cookies are amazing. Oh, okay. I was to say like <laughs> um, sexist or whatever. <laughs> no, just cookies are better. Popcorn. They just have better flavors. Yeah. Uh, now I want to try a Samoan flavored popcorn. That sounds really good. Mm. Um. Anyway, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I I can. I definitely think it's gonna be under the guise of like, yeah, we're being progressive. We're gonna let girls into our organization. But like. I don't think it's a necessary thing to do mm-hmm. <laughs> unless they have some kind of like reasoning behind it, an ulterior motive. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then also, oh, what was that? I just saw something right now. Um, what was it? Uh, I had it something in my head. I forgot. God dang it. Um, 
I just saw something. Hold up. Oh, that's what it was. Uh, so I guess one of the last pieces of U.S. news that's kind of been going on during the week is, again, the kneeling situation is blowing up again. Recently, uh, the vice president um, – oh, fuck. What's his name? Uh, oh, fuck. What's the vice president's name again? Ah, oh, shit. Mike Pence? Mike Pence, there we go. Pence. I had, yeah. Yeah, so he, he had recently gone to, I think, a Indianapolis football game, or one football game. I forget who the team was. But basically, he saw players kneeling, and he left. And, like, I guess it was planned. Well, not planned. He was pl- he was planned to go there um, before this entire kneeling situation had gone. And so he decided to get up and leave uh, because he felt that they were just disrespecting the uh, the troops or whatever. The same thing is going on, and it's just like, why are we still talking about this? Who cares? Like seriously, <laughs> there's people who are actually dying in the freaking world, and we're talking about, we're we're talking about people who are kneeling. It's like really, really, really. That's that's all I have to say is really, I don't I don't care anymore. <laughs> I don't care. I think Which, that's a good that's, response. Yeah, is that your response yeah. too? Um, it was interesting. My grandfather um, owned a deli up until like just earlier this year. Mm. Um, it was a really popular hot dog place in Turlock, which is where Kaepernick is from, the first guy. Yeah. And when Kaepernick first became a football star, you know, obviously the town was super happy. They're like, oh my God, we have a professional player from our town. Mm-hmm. Um, so they held a competition to name a hot dog the Kaepernick dog. And the competition was, you know, design the hot dog. Yeah. And, you know, someone won and it became really popular and everyone loved it. Um, And then when that kneeling thing started happening, people got upset. So they started angrily calling the restaurant and they're like, hey, you need to take that down. They're like, fine, we'll take it down. Jeez, calm down. And then when they took it down, down on someone's side, they're like, oh, my God. Uh, um, Once they took down the hot dog, everyone freaked out and said, oh, my God, now you're taking people's side. You can't do that. And they went, fine, we'll put it back up. And then the first people went, hey, now you're taking their side. And they went, nope, we don't care anymore. It's staying up. We're going to pretend nothing ever happened. <laughs> um, yeah, it's interesting. It's I don't know. I, I think it's stupid, too. It's like, seriously, let's move on, guys. Like, Jesus. There's, like, people dying in this freaking world and like who are probably stricken. Maybe we should just talk about that because that's actually more physically... Um, if that's physically happening in the world that we live in. So this, you know, we can just talk about symbols and all these things, and it's like we can move on to more important things. Speaking about important things and about people dying or almost dying, it's just totally not what happened, but um, it could happen at a very global scale. Jesus, this is a long introduction. <laughs> um, uh, an asteroid came close again. Um very close it actually was, let's see i'm trying to see how close it came it says uh a distance of about 40 about twenty-six thousand miles bringing it within distance within the moon's orbit just above the altitude of communication satellites um and they think it, it was the size of a house um and they said that uh it's not a threat well yeah no duh um da, da, da. But yeah, it could have caused a decent amount of damage, kind of like what happened in uh, Chisablinsk, which is in central Russia, that when it, I think it was an asteroid or something uh, came hurling through, and mm-hmm. uh, they, said it, they said it caused around 500,000 tons of TNT and caused a shockwave that hit damaged buildings and injured people, cool. more than 8,000 people. kind of tells you cool. how freaking powerful those things are. And they also talk about how like they're looking at... Um, asteroids and how they're doing it and they said they know about 95 percent of the big asteroids that can pretty much kill us and they're saying that they found out like 10 or five years before they can probably figure out something to kind of deal with it which i call bullshit on (laughs) okay um i don't know i think they could yeah i don't think so we you know how long it takes human beings to do things well then again if it's gonna kill us uh, i don't know if you'd be really i mean okay think about it like how, how yeah, like, and say, think about the space race. Once it, like, was like, oh, we need to do this, it happened, like, instantly. <laughs> true, true. Um, especially if we have a 10-year warning. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I think I think we're strong. <laughs> okay. 
It's crazy. Yeah. And, oh, yeah, and that's cool. It said that it passed close enough to set off our alarm system that we have set up to detect asteroids. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's crazy. You can just... That reminds you, there was that person... Yeah. I think we talked about him. There was a person who said the world was going to end. Um, I was, like, like, a week or two ago. He's like, the world's going to end. And the, the way he said it was going to end, I didn't realize this at the time, but the way he said it was going to end is that another planet was going to crash into the Earth. Mm-hmm. He's like, yep, in a couple days, it's going to happen. We're like, um, if it was about to hit us, you would see it. Yeah. Just, you would see it. It would be very, very close and very, very big. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the universe is a very yeah, dangerous know. place, I, that's for sure. I think we're fine. Nothing's going to hit us. I hope. We're fine. I, I wonder what would be the best way to, like, even deal with, like, a big-ass asteroid like that, like... I know that if you do, because I've seen Mythbusters, you know how, like, the movie Armageddon, where they blow up the asteroid? <laughs> and I like I like, mm-hmm. I like the premise to just make it worse. It's just, like, instead of one big giant ball, it's, like, six giant balls coming at us. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> <laughs> have you ever seen, um, have you ever seen One Punch Man? Um, I've heard of it. I'm, I, I probably should see it. Have you ever? Okay, there's this asteroid's about to hit the planet an asteroid punches it and instead of disintegrating it yeah it just breaks it into pieces and ends up destroying half the city (laughs) and everyone what they're like why he's like i saved your life though they're like you're getting cut off again it's entertaining um i think in real life yeah I i think if we could blow it up good enough then the pieces burn up more and we'd at least make it less bad <laughs> they were saying they can push it like get a rocket on that thing and just push it away <laughs> i don't know how that'd work but okay i'm not a rocket scientist um no i don't think that would, that would work i'm pretty i'm almost 100 percent sure that would literally not but they basically say in this article that and they said we can we maybe could, we could actually if if we had a big enough giant round thing, we might be able to bump it away, like shoot something fast enough that it hits it and kind of pushes it in a different direction. Yeah, they says that we that could. That yeah. could be possible. This says that uh, we could go up and move it and change its velocity years ahead, and that would be enough to move it away from a collision course. Okay, it's very broad, and I don't sure. I guess so. Well, <laughs> that that would be interesting, but I think it just kind of keeps you in that you, you know the universe is such a way bigger thing than you are. These all those little problems that you have are mm-hmm. definitely not that big of a deal. So just suck it up and deal with it. <laughs> God damn, Eric's so <laughs> Eric's so strong with his with his words. Um, but yeah, that's kind of let's see anything else in the. Oh, well, we 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 didn't talk about this on the podcast, I don't think. But it was it was a couple of weeks ago, and uh, I like these funny stories or whatever. I just get a joke out of them. Um, I believe I'll see if I can pull it up. But um, basically, what happened is I think a couple of weeks ago, um, there was a story. I think a girl in Italy who was having a wedding for herself, like. She literally, oh yeah, did a wedding for herself, and I think the reason about why that was because uh, I don't know, yeah, did we talk about this on the podcast? I don't think so. Yeah, we did. We, we did? did. Oh, we did. Yeah, yeah. I don't remember. Fuck. Yeah, I was saying when I first read it, I it was it was like I don't know. I still think that's weird and crazy and self-absorbed or maybe we didn't i don't know um anyway yeah i don't know it's like if you're you know people always complain about spending like oh people spend thousands of dollars on this wedding and it's just mm-hmm. one day yeah well imagine spending that much money and it's literally just for yourself it's not even a birthday or anything you're just like yeah i'm like i don't like wh- like what do you even say like yeah okay i'm marrying myself okay well like why are we here like what the hell are we <laughs> I like this. It says, uh, "Single." We're celebrating that you have enough money to birth, that we can have a little bit of fun. <laughs> Single is the new normal. Celebrate your solo status. It urges. What the fuck? <laughs> Why? Yeah, that's stupid. I don't understand that. Single is the new. I think that's true. My happiness does not depend on man. Uh, Laura Messi. 
Wow, it must be nice to have money, though, right? It must be nice to throw a party for yourself. I'm saying it sounds more like I'm desperate and old and can't find anyone because I'm so self-absorbed. I may as well celebrate the self-absorbed part. Let's party. <laughs> she brought 70 guests. She had a bridesmaid and a wedding cake, a three-layer wedding cake. Gosh darn woman. Yeah, God. That's, she was, oh, she's a 40-year-old fitness I wonder trainer. if she had a bridesmaid. She did have bridesmaids. Yeah, yeah, that sounds right. right. She did? Yep. Okay. I mean, like, like a, a, a maid of honor is what I meant to say. Maid of honor. I wonder if she had a maid of honor. <laughs> it says that uh, she had the idea for a solo wedding when two years ago after a 12-year relationship ended. <laughs> it's basically, you know, like, well, you know when you go through like, a break or whatever, like, uh, people, like, eat ice cream or whatever, or, like, mm. they get fat. Like, this is her, like, this is her, like, like way of doing that, I guess. Yeah. What the heck? I don't know. Fitness trainer sounds a little, like obsessed with her body. And then, you know, I think everything else kind of falls into place. <laughs> you know, one thing, though, I think it's a silly idea. I still go to it, though. I still go to it. You know why? Yeah, I would. Like I said, it's it's a celebration of, hey, you have enough money to burn so we can have a little bit of fun. That's, that's what it's celebrating, isn't it? <laughs> yes, exactly. I'd still go, though. Would I do it? Heck no. I don't know. <laughs> I think oh, I don't know. I think wedding ceremonies are, eh, they're too long. Let's just go and have party. Um, what was I gonna say? Like, I think wedding ceremonies in general. I don't know. I think I'm a very simple guy. Let's just let's just put the ring on it and then just everyone party up and then uh, we get on with our lives. I don't know. That's just my opinion. <laughs> my very simple minded. Uh, if I if I were. <laughs> If I ever wife, if I ever find a wife, it's just like, nope, they ain't gonna do. It. You're gonna spend thousands and thousands of dollars. We're gonna do it for this one thing, and you're all gonna like it. <laughs> God damn. Yeah. Yeah. So that was that's kind of a bit of the news that we saw to this week. Um, really interesting things. Ben, do you have anything else in the news? Anything else you saw that was kind of interesting? We didn't talk about the wildfires. I'm afraid. Uh, that's one thing we didn't talk about. But yeah, was, we didn't talk about the. Um, Bump stocks, either any of that uh, stuff. Yeah, actually, no. I actually want to talk about that as oh, well. The... For, um, but yeah, let's get to the wildfire. So yeah, right now it's standing at 21 people killed, um, including an elderly couple, which is absolutely crazy. Um, yeah. That's ridiculous. That's oh my, wow. Um, I guess sadly that's what happens when you live in a forest. But then, that can happen anywhere, though. To be fair, that can't be a grass fire or if you live somewhere. You know, those type of things can happen anywhere, but especially. Yeah, I mean, dude, if you look at a map right now of the fires in California, there's actually some pretty close to Sacramento. Yeah, I bet you a lot of those are grass fires too. Um, was, yeah. she, was, she was texting me saying that um, there's some people that got evacuated pretty close to us. Yeah. And that um, that uh, if I if I could lend her the car. <laughs> oh wow. Damn. To like drive stuff over to them. Wow. But yeah, that's pretty. Like, that's pretty crazy though. Um, and it's it's funny because it's not happening during summer. It's happening during like, it's almost fall pretty much. I don't know if that's when wildfires happen or not, but yeah, it's pretty crazy. Um, and then the bump stocks, yeah. So I would like to kind of put a note on this. Um, automatic weapons were have already been illegalized pretty much. Um, what's allowed uh, these types of machines to occur is what's called bump stocks. Um, which basically is allowed to be put on a weapon since it's not a mechanical part. Um, but it basically allows for the recoil enough to where you can pretty much fire at a very fast rate. Um, and, uh, yeah, so that's something that they're looking to. And I think, actually, they've, the Republicans and it's been like a um, you know bipartisan type of thing where they're actually going to look to ban it altogether, um, which is... Yeah, that's what I... would Red. <laughs> so hopefully that goes through, and hopefully they can change that. That's where it actually goes. Republicans like to talk a lot. Yeah. Um. Interestingly enough, so I Republicans I, like to talk a lot, and then they puss out on everything. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Interesting enough. Um. We had talked. Yeah. I I had no, I didn't mention this, but uh, my brother who's at USC right now. Uh. He they had a what's it called a um. Not a fake or like a what's it called? Not a fake call, but it's more like a like a, a false alarm. There you go. A false alarm, like mass shooting. Okay. And um, he was telling hmm. me he was telling me this like what had happened because I had just talked to him on Friday. Um, so he kind of walked me through like kind of what happened. Uh, so I guess what happened is is that um, 
I guess it affects a lot of people in Southern California, what had happened in Las Vegas. And what had happened is that there was a teacher in the business department who uh, lost, or I think, I'm not sure mm-hmm. if she lost three people or she knew three people who were like affected by the thing. I think there were, I think she lost three people that she knew at the, at the shooting. And uh, so the teacher was extremely, you know, she was not herself pretty much. And uh, what had happened is that she had told her students that she had seen a someone with like she's she's seen someone with like guns or whatever walking around, or at least there was like, a mass shooter on on side mm. or whatever. And so pretty much all you know, basically, when a professor is telling you this, you don't you know, you take it like it's a real thing. So she was like to them like you gotta like report this to the police or whatever. So um, my brother who kind of lives near the uh, near where near, near where it kind of happened. He had told me that he mm-hmm. was walking back to his dorm, and what had happened is that he was he saw the like whole bunch of people leaving like the like that but like that building or whatever, just like running and screaming. And my brother's like, like what the heck's going on? Like any normal person, like why is people like running and screaming? Like something had happened, and so like any like any normal human being, my mm-hmm. brother's just like you know, like I'm just gonna run with them. And so he was trying to like, like you know, talk to like what's going on, what's going on. And some people were like just I'm just running, kind of like what he did was doing. And then, uh, uh, he, and of course he talked to some people like, yeah, there's a, there's a mass shooter, like, you know, some like something to that degree. And so I was like, holy fudge. And he had not known about Vegas, but I think it happened the night before. Yeah. Yeah. He had happened the night before or the day of. And so like my brother and us, we watch a lot of like, um, like military podcasts, people who've been in the military and they talk a lot about like, if, if you're trying to like, if there's a mass shooter, whatever, you want to like try to find cover or whatever. And so he was like literally like rationally thinking like these things like okay like well, if there's a mass shoot like like where's the best way for co- where's the best place for cover you know make sure you're uh, always in cover so in case you need to take cover mm-hmm. when there's a shooter you can do that and um, so like uh, the police are definitely saying the police were saying like like put away your phones and just run pretty much and uh, so he had gone up to okay. the uh, the third floor so pretty much he 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 ducked inside a building like a dorm. And so he pretty much went up to the highest mm-hmm. floor, and he and a couple people, like, they hid in someone's dorm. And they can over kind of see, like, the central, like, plaza of the school. And he, have, like, he can see, like, some people, like, uh, like moving away or running too. But it was pretty much, like, a deserted place by the time he got up there. And he felt safe because, like, it's the third – it's, like, the like – the, it's not the third floor. It's, like, the eighth floor. And it's just, like – it's, like, in this one specific dorm. And, think, and of course, like, there, if a shooter's out there, he's not going to go up to that specific room and go up there. Um, but, uh, he, of course he was looking on Twitter and all these things. So you just see like in that area, like, like, of course, a whole bunch of police and SWAT and all the, all that good stuff. But it's crazy. Like we were talking about before, like how that shit can happen anywhere, anytime. And it's almost like a regular day occurrence where it's just like, it's like, I guess everyone's cool with it. But no, I was just want, I just want to kind of walk everyone through that, uh, through that story. But it's just kind of like a little bit of like what kind of goes on to that type of situation, what it kind of looks like. Um, of course, not from a primary source, mm-hmm. but from a yeah. secondary source. But it was a pretty crazy kind of hear what he was going through. And I was telling him, like, dude, you're thinking like hell rationally, like that, you know, trying to get cover and like making sure you know, know where you're at and where's the best, safest place to go. Me, I would have been like all over the place and like yeah, 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 and just like oh my goodness, what am I doing? But um, no, that was pretty. It was pretty crazy what what had happened to him. I just kind of want to put it out there. Yeah, that was crazy. Um, yep. Uh, I'm trying to think, but yeah, um, yeah. So for I guess we can kind of go to normal things. Uh, so for myself, I think for me this week's been kind of good. It's been the third week. Um, I tried to put a vlog up today. We yeah, actually today, but it didn't go through. Hopefully, it goes up tomorrow. But yeah, uh, my week's been well. Uh, research is going very well. Um, we kind of created like an outline to kind of good. look over like this is what we're gonna do week per week. And um, I'm gonna try to finish like an author a day, not a book a day. Like more like this is a historical figure. Can we look at their readings and can we look at their writings and like what can we get from it, um, or what can I can get from it? And uh, I'm finally getting to a point where like I have some of a schedule. Like the first two weeks was kind of weird because like um, my seminar class, which has a lot of reading in it, it didn't really start up. It started up like the like that second week. Um, but I kind of got late in the game for that, and so kind of screwed up my weekend, and it was hard for me to do things. But now it's kind of like I've had my schedule mm-hmm. set out, and now I can kind of go about, um, you know, 
being prepared for a lot of things and it, it feels really good to kind of be on the schedule have your priorities straight because i think that's one of the things that people don't really recognize is that like if you have a lot of things to do right in a short amount of time i feel that a lot of people think like oh i can't do this or that i think the biggest thing you kind of have to prioritize is what's important to you like if you want mm-hmm. school if you want to be exercised you know be be healthy and get enough sleep or whatever, and anything like that, you have to prioritize those things. You just can't like, oh, I'm, I'm just going to kind of do it. You People prioritize like a whole bunch of other things that are not like necessary to them to be having a successful life or like I guess the, like, the life they want to have. And so for me, I'm trying to prioritize like, you know, I want to have my school done. I want to have the YouTube channel done. Um, I want to have, you know, I want to have my exercise and my health. And my, of course, sleep is part of that. And so, like, if anything comes, if anything doesn't mm-hmm. attribute to those things, um, I'm either going to do them very literally, like maybe 10 minutes, or I'm not going to do them at all. And I feel like that's something I'm going to try to do for this quarter. I, and I think I did do it decently, but and I think now I'm becoming a lot more stricter with my, uh, with what I want to do in the quarter, uh, especially when you're taking 17 units like I am. So okay. for me, that's like the main goal is to kind of do that. It's funny if I was gonna try to create a schedule because uh, I was thinking of you, Ben, when you when you had shown the schedule that you had done. Not to that degree because I don't have time to do that. <laughs> Priorities. I didn't, I'm not prioritizing that. But um, um, funny enough, like on Tuesday, I have a class that starts at 1:40. Um, but funny enough, I was like extremely tired from the day before, and I was studying for my map my map quiz I was gonna have. Um, a whole bunch of other things to do, and like so I checked it like at 12. Like, what time my class started? I'm like, okay, it starts at 1.40. Mm-hmm. That should be good. I don't know what happened between 12 and 1.40, but for some reason, I start, I, I thought the class started at 1.50. Like, I don't know okay. <laughs> how that happened. So I got there at, like, 1.50. I was, like, chilling. I'm so cool. Like, I'm, I'm going to get there in class on time. It's all good. And so I, I even go to the bathroom, bro. I even go to the bathroom before i go to class that's how much time i thought i had and <laughs> so i go to the i go to the um the classroom i'm like there's people in there like what the heck that's not right and i'm just like i'm looking to see if like there's someone else because like, i think we do like uh like um student-led discussions or whatever it's like i don't remember i don't know that person so i saw a professor mm-hmm. like oh fuck me it's, it's 140 I just, at that moment i just remembered so i walked in he sat at my desk and of course good thing i didn't miss anything big it was at that moment where like, okay, it's a couple things. I either have to create some type of schedule, which I am gonna do now. I'm gonna not gonna like to that degree, Ben, where you have like every single <laughs> minute like of your life scheduled because life doesn't work like that. And if anything goes wrong, your schedule's all screwed up. But <laughs> that's just my opinion. Um, nah, mine's mine's very flexible. I can change it all the time. That's good. Um, but what I'm gonna try to do is at least have like, okay, this is when all my class starts, so I can kind of like fit in like my chunks in time, and at least have like an hour or two for myself just to kind of like just relax or do anything else and then add my exercise aspect to it as well so that i can have that type of schedule sorted out i feel like if i do that it's going to make my life a lot better especially when i have such a busy schedule like i do um but it was, it was that it was at that moment that i knew i needed a schedule some type of schedule make my life make my life a lot easier <laughs> but yeah hmm. um yeah i think that's yeah. definitely a good idea um no, my schedule is very easy to change, you know, because I have like a, a very general version of it. Mm-hmm. And then I can literally just change it throughout the week. I mean, day to day, I'm always changing like little things for the future. Mm-hmm. Um, and I still sometimes miss stuff. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. I, it's a lot easier to have everything kind of laid out, yeah. even in a really vague manner. Because mm-hmm. then you can just ignore the stuff that's kind of extraneous and then use the things that are important. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, actually, hold on. I want to ask you something. So we, we were talking about this before, um, I, like on Monday, I think it was. You had said you're taking – so you're a genetics major, right? You work with genes and all that good stuff, yeah? Yeah. Why mm. are you taking physics? Yeah. Explain that for me because I – It's physics for biology. How does that work? It's a requirement for my degree. It's um, it's physics for biology. Um, It's just a requirement. <laughs> because, like, for uh, me, like, physics is, like, you know, like – um, like building a catapult and things of that nature is like a very similar physics, I guess. So physics literally, physics is like the most, 
So if you're looking at science, math is the most basic fundamental thing, just period. Mm -hmm. It's, it is everything. Every math is everything. You can can take a math class and you can be learning about any subject and vice versa. Mm -hmm. Um, After that is physics. Mm -hmm. Physics explains everything. Physics explains everything from the way that black holes move, the most like giant massive things in the entire universe down to the way that things smaller than electrons move. Mm. Um, consequently, this is a, since this is a physics for biology, um, half the time we're basically studying chemistry via physics. <laughs> That's crazy. Um, so it's like, okay, you know, where, where does the energy come from? Like, it's kind of funny because these are physics teachers teaching physics, and they're like trying to teach it from a biology perspective, but they don't really know biology. <laughs> um but so consequently, they know like, you know, so they use a few select biology examples, like the things that they've, you know, looked up on so that they can use it as an example. Um, but it's it's entertaining at times. But it's things like, OK, so there's this chemical. It's called ATP and it produces energy. Why does it produce energy? Where did that energy come from? What if ATP is floating in the middle of space and it breaks? Did it produce <laughs> energy? No, it didn't. Everything you know is a lie. Now let's relearn stuff. <laughs> That's sort of how the first day was. It was like, it was like, okay, like drop all the notions about everything because it works a little different than you might think it does. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, so that's kind of yeah, what you guys so are it's with. it's you know since physics can describe like. Yeah, physics can describe like literally anything, and we're just using it to describe biology and chemistry, mainly mm. chemistry. Ah, that's cool. The one thing I do like, I think, where our, our both of our, you know, sciences meet, I know history is kind of trying to be a science itself, which it kind of really isn't because it's like, yeah, well, that's another stuff for another time. Um, but I think what both of our things are trying to do, I think a lot of like knowledge areas is that we're all trying to figure out why something happens. Like, where does that thing originate from? Mm-hmm. Like, this is not... Like, things don't happen for a reason. Um, I mean, they probably... Well, they do happen for a reason. Things do happen for a reason, I think. Or they... No, that's more a philosophical thing. I won't go there. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> I see. You sound like you're getting a little too... Philosophical. Too deep. Yeah, no, I'm getting too deep. But yes. no, that's something why... Um, that's something I think we're all trying to do. Is right? We're all trying to, like, figure something out. And, like, what's the problem and why it's there? Because, you know, nothing ever just happens. There's something, like, driving that force to create something. Um, for you guys, I think mm-hmm. it's a lot more... Would you say it's a lot more, like, like, st- like set in stone? Like, okay, this is the thing. It's not really bendable. It's it's it. Would you say? Would you would you go to far as to say um, that? I think I see what you're trying to say. Um... Yeah, I mean, it's somewhat, um, I mean, it's definitely like when we find an answer, it's usually a pretty solid answer. Mm. It kind of depends what field you're talking about. If we're talking about genetics, it's so wibbly wobbly. It's so like, it's like, okay, we found a gene that affects, um, we think it's one of like 30. Mm-hmm. We're not sure what mm-hmm. happened. <laughs> where it's like um you know there's a just rule it's like okay yeah this is a rule that rule related but there's also a lot of like yeah this thing happens um we think it might be because of this but it might not mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. then like 50 years later shit that was that was wrong turns out that was wrong mm-hmm. if you ever take like a lot of law if you ever took a series of chemistry courses, which I know you won't, but um, no, that won't. Uh, a bunch of chemistry, yeah, they, yeah, they say to you, they're like, can I teach you things? Um, in next quarter or next semester, we're gonna tell you which things that we taught you are wrong. Yeah. And then, and then next quarter or semester, yeah, we'll tell you which of those things were wrong. Wow. It keeps building up like that, and um, yeah, and it's like, okay, we have this model. And it works really well for this, yeah. this aspect, this the when atoms interact, like just, but only there. If you're trying to look at this thing, don't use that model, model, because it'll, it'll break. That also happens. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it's for like, or actually, in fact, this happens is there's, 
there's this like ultimate model that takes into account all of these different things, but it's so annoyingly complex that we just use each of the smaller models instead. <laughs> yeah. That happens sometimes. Because I think that that thing with history is that like it's very like up to what's it called like the way you interpret information. And it was funny because I was watching. There's a show mm -hmm. on, uh, it's on Stars. I think it is. It's called Outlander. I don't know if you heard of it or not. Um, the the print base premise mm -hmm. of the show is this mm -hmm. lady from like the World War from World War II. She was a nurse, and her husband <laughs> were uh, they're British. Um, they were traveling up to uh, Scotland, and uh, she gets sent back through time back into like the 1740s and 50s she falls in love with like a, one of the dudes there and she has a child and then she comes mm -hmm. back to the mark well not the modern world but she's living now in the 60s um and so funny enough like uh one of, because it's very like like history history focused so you have like a lot of people a lot of people playing like historians or like characters who are historians and so the daughter of the guy from the 1760s and the oh sorry spoiler alert sorry and we want to watch it, um, uh, so whatever like the child or whatever. So basically I I don't well whatever I don't care. Um, by the time people watch this, it's gonna be <laughs> old. Uh, so basically the one thing is the daughter she became a like a history major focus and she was talking to another guy about like who was also like mm -hmm. a historian. And they're talking about, like, does history really matter? Or, like, is it really, like, something that's, like, you should know? Because, like, the history that you know is going to be changed 6,000 times in a row. So it's only, like, is it, like, something you can actually, you know, what's it called? Like, rely upon. You know what I'm saying? As, like, a good source of information. Mm -hmm. And so that's one of the things with history is that, like, you're kind of dealing with, like, well, yeah, according to this professor, according to this person, it's this. According to this person, it's this. You don't really know what's the real it probably somewhere in the middle probably like what you're like i guess you take what you agree with the most or what makes more sense to you it's kind of one, mm -hmm. it's, that's the one thing that's like with history yeah i think it's almost before but like that's one thing with history is just kind of like kind of bugging me a little bit but i think with sciences it's kind of a little more like this is it but then with you guys there's like little like intricacies and things of that nature you guys are going through the same thing i would take it right i'm sorry what was that last sentence <laughs> oh that we're, all, we're kind of both going through the same thing where like always information is always being new information is always being brought in to explain something you know nothing's ever really sent stone oh yeah 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 so i guess it's the same thing with like, with all forms of uh fields which is good to know um yeah so yeah hopefully with my research that's um one thing i also think about that as well as how would someone else interpret it um but yeah, I have to read. I have to read a lot, <laughs> like a lot, <laughs> like a lot. I have to read a lot. Um, but no, I'm enjoying yeah. it. So I'm, I'm, I'm really happy doing it. Good. Um, and uh, do you know what your research is going to be in, or no? Or you have no idea? Oh, I have no clue. Um, huh. No, my first step is I'm going to look at all the professors. Which I've already done actually. Um, I'm going to list create a list of professors from like the one I want to work with the most to the one I like don't really care about the research and I'm in them mm. um, in a specific order with specific words and specific format and all that good stuff. Um, yeah. So I don't actually know yet. Um, most likely something to do with DNA. Mm. Um, not necessarily like, you know, the exact thing I want to do because yeah. I don't know if anyone's doing that kind of research at Davis right now. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we'll see. I'll update you. <laughs> I'll keep you updated on it. Sweet. Um, I know it's pretty late in the day. Uh, I think that's all. That's it for me. What about you, Ben? Yeah. I. I anything else? Um, basically, kind of same old with this. Yeah. Um, so mean, I'm good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so hopefully you guys enjoyed our, our long, awesome discussions. Hopefully they're awesome. Hopefully you guys can hopefully understand us. Uh, there are some internet breakage connections. <laughs> uh, so hopefully you guys didn't, we're not too drove yeah. by that. Um, but yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed the podcast. Uh, hopefully the vlog, um, from Monday will be uploaded to, well, in a couple hours, or not, to, to tomorrow. Um, and then hopefully this podcast will be uploaded on Friday. If it doesn't, it'll be uploaded late Friday or early Saturday. It will come up this week. And, uh, yeah, 
Um, see you guys on the next one. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Here's the one I used to wonder what Bye. It feels like.